In this video, I'm talking about plywood and OSB oriented strand board prices for the middle of March, 2024. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. We are a newsletter coming out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada since 1952. I'm the third owner. Every, every week, every Friday, we publish 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices and a market commentary explaining why those prices are changing. These are FOB mill, mill gate prices. So just the wood doesn't include any of the add-ons like commission or freight or duty or anything like that. So today I'm gonna to talk about plywood, Canadian softwood plywood, 9.5 millimeters or 3 8 inch out of Toronto and OSB, oriented strand board 7 16 from Ontario. These are the benchmarks or the market leader in Canada and impacting quite significantly uh, US as well. The prices that Madison's tracks covers all of North America. I'm just using the uh, benchmark items uh, for this uh, short video. My customers who have a subscription to the dashboard are able to see all the prices, including USA. So as I've explained in uh, my last video and in some videos earlier, the panel producers, you know, that market does not necessarily go up and down exactly when Dimension Lumber does. They do move in tandem and that's because it relies very heavily on what is going on with U.S. home building and new housing starts. But plywood, especially, and also OSB, uh, it has other uses. It has other applications besides single family housing and does have the ability for those prices to change on its own regardless of what's going on with dimension. Also, uh, it's much more tightly controlled. There are uh, much fewer panel mills than there are dimension lumber mills and much fewer companies making that product. And a lot of those companies are not publicly traded. And so they don't have shareholders to report to and they don't necessarily need to release details of what they're doing operationally. And we find out these things, what they're doing through the uh, weekly market survey that we do, contacting them to find out what the prices are and why those prices are changing. And so there will be times where the market is soft and customers are making counter offers and they're trying to drive the price down. And the dimension mills, sometimes they don't really have a lot of play because there's so many of them and customers can switch regions like the Dimension Lumber all meets the building code. So whether it's Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce or Southern Pine. So a customer in a large uh, populated area in the central US or the east coast of the US can choose from whichever region and they might get a better deal and the mill that was trying to hold on to the price that they were quoting might lose that sale. Panel mills, they don't go below the cost of production. They don't need to. There's not enough competition. They can't be driven down. The customer will not have the ability to counter offer lower than the price that the panel mill is willing to sell at. So let's just look at some of the graphs and I'll explain what, where we are right now and a little bit in relation to what we saw over the past two and a half years when the uh, price volatility that was going on compared to the previous 10 years from 2008 to 2017, which is all we have to say, what was the last normal, normal year, normal prices. And so beginning here with plywood, uh, like I was saying, Canadian softwood plywood out of Toronto, 9.5 millimeters or 3 8 inch. You can see that blue line for this year, 2024, prices uh, rising already for the past couple of weeks. But more interesting, I think, look at that pink line for 2022. As I was saying that these plywood price, the panel prices do seem to be moving somewhat ahead of the dimension lumber as at this time in 2022, these prices were already dropping. And so very soon that um, high level on the scale of 1400 is going to disappear and we'll start seeing more uh, regular price trend uh, up and down throughout the year as we had seen previous to 2020. So now we have uh, increasing by some good increments there since the past couple of weeks uh, from the end of February till now, March 8th, and uh, heading up for this year. 
it's not known yet uh, whether this is a ongoing demand or just a blip. That's why people subscribe to the dashboard so they can see how those prices change every week. Here we have OSB, again, the benchmark, 7 sixteenths out of Ontario, similar. Um, a little bit different here where the yellow line for last year, 2023, is quite a bit below this year, whereas for the plywood, they matched quite closely. But once again, that pink line for 2022 was really already starting to drop at this time, where uh, in the previous video where I was talking about the dimension lumber, there was still a few weeks of uh, level before it started to really drop and uh, came down to the bottom mm, in the middle of the summer, let's say in July. And so same with the uh, plywood there, as you were seeing, and also with the dimension lumber, very, very stable in the first few months of this year until just now, uh, beginning of March and heading up. So it's going to be really interesting to see in the next few weeks whether that uh, line that you're seeing for uh, 2024, the blue line, continues upward. Okay, and so very interesting, sharp increases in the past couple of weeks. At this time, still not a massive amount of volume being sold. So we need to see if the producers of these uh, plywood and OSB products are going to adjust their production up to meet what this new demand is, and then maybe those prices will level off. You know, it's early days for uh, building yet. Now, when I talk about plywood and OSB, especially plywood, it's important to note that there are uh, a lot of uses and applications that have nothing to do with home building. Concrete forming, you know, for high rises or other um, uh, infrastructure projects and and repairing uh, uh, after storm. So uh, if people will remember uh, in the middle of 2020 when there was a lot of social unrest and people were sort of out on the street and there was a lot of windows in uh, the stores that were boarded up. So that's plywood. OK, or if those if there actually was uh, destruction and the windows were broken and or if there's a storm flooding uh, re-roofing these are all uses for plywood especially sometimes OSB and so that's why sometimes the prices of those products might change while dimension doesn't really change because it's not going into home building right now because of the time of year and where we've been with the market over the last year and a half I think that this is for home building because we haven't, I mean, it's the end of winter. So I think that this increase in uh, prices right now is going to indicate an increase in dimension lumber prices or at least an increase in sales volumes of dimension lumber, if not the prices. Okay, so check back often. Subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when we make another update. Click like so other viewers will get recommended this awesome video. Uh, if you have interest more than just the little tiny pieces that I show you here or that you see on the website, go on my website. There's a link here in the caption. Ask for a sample. We will send you the list of all the 500 commodity prices, uh, softwood lumber and panel that we track and what that price is this week. And we will send you the market commentary explaining why those prices are changing. If that interests you, you can fill out a form or let us know at the office and we'll send you an invoice. And then you also will get access on Thursday nights when we make the price update, uh, the data update every week, instead of having to wait until I make a YouTube or uh, we post on the website on a two week lag, just those tiny snippet. Okay. And thanks for watching. And we'll be back again next week with what happened with lumber prices next week. And uh, hopefully I'll have time to talk about that Douglas fur that the person was asking about.